it has been 40 years, four entire decades since the release of David Cronenberg's Videodrome in 1983, a psychedelic trip of hallucinations and one of the most prophetic films ever made. Of course, I'm certainly not the first person to say that. The film's legacy has primarily been defined by being ahead of its time. But what is Videodrome trying to say? Behind the mind-bending narrative disjunctions and grotesque imagery, what is the real horror of Videodrome? First of all, who is David Cronenberg? Well, he is a Canadian filmmaker born 1943 in Toronto, Ontario, most well known and credited for being the inventor of the body horror genre. As lofty of a claim that may seem to be, it's not much of a reach at all. His influence is unparalleled in this subgenre. His filmography often dabbles in the absurd, picking apart and attempting to dissect the human body as a subject for his art. The absurdity is our existence, the consciousness of a living organism made up of flesh, blood, muscle tissue, and organs. Cronenberg is a self-identified existentialist, and such is reflected in his movies. He approaches film with the intention to truly express himself, with little to no care for the people who don't understand his work. Because of this, he's received plenty of criticism, especially during his early career. In the case of Videodrome, a lot of explicit elements were forcibly cut in early screenings. At the time, it was his most audacious project yet. Whether it still is, is up for debate. Regardless, it's a challenging film, and it took me a bit of time to fully appreciate it. To have a better idea of what the film is getting at, it would be helpful to know someone by the name of Marshall McLuhan. If you're not already familiar with him, he was a professor at the University of Toronto, coincidentally the same university that Cronenberg attended. McLuhan's writings, lectures, and interviews were widely influential during his heyday. Cronenberg has made it no secret that his ideas are baked into the heart of the film. As a matter of fact, the character of Brian Oblivion, played by Jack Crelly, is based directly on McLuhan. The medium is the message. A slogan that McLuhan is most known for, and no doubt has direct thematic relevance to Videodrome. The saying dates back to his 1964 book titled Understanding Media, where the first chapter was, the medium is the message. McLuhan emphasized the importance of being aware of the technology that shapes us. He views technology as an extension of ourselves, but by that same token, it has the ability to morph and reshape our existence, just as it always has. He marks the printing press as the catalyst for the Industrial Revolution, the ability to spread information on an unprecedented scale, eventually later evolving to radio and television, only broadening the scope of communication. Videodrome opens with a message to the protagonist, Max, receiving a recorded video from his secretary on the television. From the very beginning, our attention is directed to this device. It is the central medium of focus for both Cronenberg in Videodrome and McLuhan in his most popular writings. The television screen has become the retina of the mind's eye. Brian Oblivion prefaces the thesis of Videodrome with this foreboding observation. The TV is becoming a part of us, or perhaps it already has. The film's bodily metamorphosis is the symbolic representation of this shift to a new age, a new flesh. Max's slow descent into madness and hallucination is the process of distortion and reshaping. What appears on the screen becomes indistinguishable from reality, effectively becoming reality itself. Before Max's mind is overtaken by Videodrome, he is in search of a more grotesque and abrasive form of programming for Civic TV. There's something personal as well in his interest in 
extreme sexuality and violent sexuality, it's not just that he thinks the marketplace is ready for it. There's something in him that's drawn to it, and he feels that if he's drawn to it, then there will be an audience that's drawn to it as well. He is innately drawn to this desire, suggesting that there is something within human nature that has a propensity for violence and extreme acts. Of course, the extent to which these urges exist vary from person to person, some being more or less innocent than others. But nonetheless, Cronenberg uses this unsettling reality to foster a great unease within the atmosphere and subtext of the film. However disturbing the content of the Videodrome program may be, it is ultimately nothing new. Sexual violence has existed as long as humans have. The perturbing fact of the matter is the advent of television and when left unaccounted for, its ability to permeate the message. It is, after all, the medium that facilitates. I said that the effect of TV, the message, of TV is quite independent of the program. That is, there is a huge technology involved in TV which surrounds you physically. And the effect of that huge service environment on you personally is vast. The effect of the program is incidental. McLuhan saw the world becoming a global village where the surplus of new technological communication would interlink everyone, forever changing how we engage with the people around us. Electric circuitry profoundly involves men with one another. Information pours upon us instantaneously and continuously. As soon as information is acquired, it is very rapidly replaced by still newer information. Our electrically configured world has forced us to move from the habit of data classification to the mode of pattern recognition. We can no longer build serially, block by block, step by step, because instant communication ensures that all factors of the environment and of experience coexist in a state of active interplay. This quote is nearly 60 years old. We can only wonder what McLuhan would have had to say about the internet. Our reliance on mobile phones, computers, and various social networks has been talked about to death, so there's no sense in me rambling about it. But knowing this today makes the words of McLuhan and the work of Cronenberg all the more fascinating. Videodrome illustrates the intertwining of technology and humans quite literally. The television program mixing with perceived reality, and a handgun molding itself into the flesh of the carrier. Your phone is an extension of yourself. Whatever device you're watching this on is an extension of yourself. The Truest Picture YouTube channel is just incidental. Videodrome supposes that when we become so attached to the screen, we lose a bit of ourselves. That screen begins to dictate more of our actions, the same way it eventually controls Max. This all sounds kind of familiar? Yeah, because in 2023, it's normal everyday life. I don't think we should take it for granted. The imagery in the film is integral to understanding its themes. Cronenberg and cinematographer Mark Irwin took a neutral visual approach to the look of the film not using exceedingly wide or long lenses, only moving the camera when necessary, and maintaining a healthy balance of bright and darkly lit scenes. This makes for more of an objective, observational visual essence. The purpose of this creative decision being to seamlessly integrate the viewer into the world of Videodrome, to experience the conjoined reality of the screen. A hallucination feels real. And I've encountered this in several of my movies, uh, The Dead Zone with visions that the Johnny Smith character has, and more recently in Spider, the Ray Fiennes character is, is constantly hallucinating. But I've always felt that it would be a mistake to telegraph this, to have a color shift or optical distortion by using a very wide lens or, or any of the computer things that you could do now, because A hallucination feels real to the person who's having it, and that's what makes it so scary. The aforementioned intertwining of technology and humans 
is shown to us through Cronenberg's iconic body horror, making use of brilliant practical effects and the talent of Rick Baker. Cronenberg isn't solely grounding the film in the ideas of McLuhan. He is borrowing, as every artist does, and making it his own. While it is a meditation on the looming uncertainty of technological innovation, it is also a self-reflective look at the depiction of sex and violence in his own films. Videodrome was a response to the common criticism at the time of the supposed excessive violence in media. There are definitely a handful of ways to interpret this film. Cronenberg to me is one of the most compelling filmmakers, and not just because he's from my hometown, but because he has a knack for pushing boundaries, and really, not giving a shit about pleasing a general audience. Watching one of his films can feel like you're peering into his mind and seeing things you're not supposed to. There's really no one else quite like David Cronenberg. So you made it to the end of the video. You might as well leave a like and you might as well subscribe. Also feel free to sound off in the comments and keep your eyes open for future videos because there's a lot more that I want to do with this channel and I appreciate everyone who has shown support so far. But yeah, thanks for watching.